I'm going to show you how to calibrate the MCXL. The first question is, is when would you do that? Well, I think you should do it probably after any major software updates or if you get a couple restorations that should have looked better and they just didn't, maybe something went wrong in the, in the calibration of the MCXL, but they don't go out of calibration very often. So this isn't something you're gonna do uh, many times. If you move your milling chambers, for sure, you'd want to calibrate them just because of them getting moved around. So anyway, first things first, always, always, always make sure that the door is shut. If you don't shut the door, it won't allow the motors to come into position so that the calibration process can start. So we're going to go over to our uh, CERIC computer and go on up to the little secret window, go to configurations, select devices. We have multiple uh, devices in our office. Uh, chances are you have uh, one MCXL and one Omnicam, so you would select it. Any green checks means that it can communicate to it. Any red exclamation marks means it's having a communication problem. Typically, it's because you forgot to turn it on. Just go turn the darn thing on. So I want to select this milling chamber. In this window, you're going to see all sorts of things with the IP address and different selections, but we're going to go down to where it says calibrate. You'll see a little wrench down here. It's so cute, little cute wrench. Select that. When you immediately hit that button, the motors come into position, but if the door was open, it wouldn't allow it to happen. And then you got to go all the way back to your milling chamber and shut the door. So just get in the habit of closing the door before you initiate any of these. So when you look back at the screen, you're going to see the two calibration pins, and I'll show you those in a second, and then the calibration body, which is a triangular piece. Typically, the calibration pins are on your left side here. This is the calibration body, which we're going to put in, and then also the pin. So let's put in the body first, open the door, and with this, a lot of the times you're going to see that this is wider than what the block is. So what that means is you have to pull out the little sleeve that's inside the chuck. Here, let me get this screwed. Here, unscrew this a little bit more. The little set screw that you set the blocks in. And you pull out this component right here. So that's the sleeve that actually engages around uh, a ceramic block. We'll set that aside. You definitely don't want to lose that. And then you're going to slide the calibration body in and rotate it. And you'll feel it go into a little slot. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. And then you take your, your wrench and tighten that up. And you can crank it down all the way to where it stops. If you don't have a torque wrench, just make sure it's snug. You want to get it tight. You're not going to uh, rip through that, uh, that set screw. So now we have the calibration body. Now we have to set the, the pins in here. So these burrs may be brand new or you may have a few uses to them. So don't, don't throw those out because we're going to install those after we do the calibration. You're going to take the, the torque wrench that you use to change out the burrs and get these little rascals out. Set these aside in a place you know you're not going to lose them because you want to keep using those. They may still have life to them. Lefty Lucy, right? Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. We're going to take that little rascal out right there. Always remember that the pointed one goes on the right side, the flat ended burr goes on the left side. Now, in the calibration pins, they you can tell the calibration pins from the other burrs because they don't have any diamond on it. They're flat and they're both the same. There isn't a pointed one that goes on the right or a flat end that goes on the left. They're exactly the same. So we're going to slide this in here and then torque it into place. And we torque these in. It's okay to hear the little, little crack of the torque wrench. You want to hear that so that it's torqued properly. If there's any doubt whether or not you torqued it into place, like here, I'm going to torque it in once. You hear it crack. Like let's say you didn't know if it happened or not. 
just do it again because the torque wrench won't allow it to be tighter than what it needed to be so I can do it again and it will still be the same tension okay so we have the calibration body in we have the two calibration pins in place always shut the door and then you can hit start on your MCXL or you can go back to the software and hit start there typically the easiest thing is just hit the button here and what's going to happen is the calibration pins are going to go into that calibration body and touch it in very specific locations and make sure everything is set up. Now this is going to take uh, a number of minutes. It will, it will tell you here in just a minute how long that will take. But this is probably something you don't want to do right before a patient uh, needs to uh, have a restoration. So get this done in the morning or at the end of the day so you're not waiting on the, uh, the calibration to happen. The calibration process is completed. It took about 20 minutes to get that done. So again, don't do this right before a patient. Get it done at lunch or after work. Now, we have to take out those parts and put the burrs back in. We put our burrs in a, in a good location, and now we need to take these out. So we'll just go backwards from what we did before. Take out this little rascal. Again, put everything back in place so you don't lose any of these components. Don't forget the little sleeve that goes in here. And you'll turn it and you'll feel it go back into its notch. It should be flush for the outer ring. And then you can just take the set screw and tighten it up a little bit. Again, you're gonna put a block in there later for one of your restorations, so you don't have to tighten it in all the way. We need to uh, put our burrs back in. If you look at the software, the software, uh, gives you the options for the burr changing. So we're gonna still select which ones we put back in there. So again, it's a 12S or whatever burr you used before, a 12S and then the, uh, the pointed burr on the right. So we select them then we go back to the milling chamber because if, if we hit start, and many people make that mistake, if you hit start, it, the system thinks you've already changed the burrs, but we haven't started that yet. So we're going to take out the little calibration pins and lefty loosey. We're going to put it back right back in its little little plastic coffin right there. That's what it looked like. That was my first thought. It looked like a little coffin. We don't want to lose those. So now these are for safekeeping. Put that back in there. And then we're going to put our burrs back in again you need to look at them very carefully and know which one's which the flat ended burr goes on the left side the pointed burr goes on the right side if you don't know which one's which go look at the box the box will have a little graphic of it so this is the flat end step burr turn that in tight with your hands and then take to the take the torque wrench and again, make sure you torque it all the way. If you feel like you didn't torque it in all the way, try again. You're not going to tighten it up too much. That's the nature of a torque wrench. I'm going to put in the left one. Again, the left side is the pointed end burr or the pointed cylinder burr, it's called on the box. And tighten that up till you hear it crank. Close the door and then you can either hit start here or you can hit start on the software. It's easier just to hit start on the milling chamber. You have just calibrated your MCXL.